So today we're working with watercolour and string. So the materials we'll need are some watercolour, a paintbrush, some pens, some different size string, tape, a jar of water and some thick paper. Before we start painting, to stop the paper from warping, you should tape it to a board. I just use some masking tape that I have. So load up your brush with a nice wash of paint. You can tell I use this blue quite a lot. And we start painting. So this can be really loose. Um, just have fun, enjoy colour, see what you can make the, make the paint do. Um, I really enjoy working with blues and greens and really sort of natural colours. So I'm just having a bit of fun. One of my favourite things to do is mix blues and ochres to get these really sort of semi-greens. They're sort of a very yellowish natural green. Um, and it's just one of my favourite techniques. Rather than just using a green for my palettes, I'll, I'll actually mix it, but using sort of non-bright yellows, just, just to add a little bit more interest. The paintbrush I'm using is actually just one for the entire painting. It's a squirrel hair mop by Winsor & Newton, but I just recommend something that can hold quite a lot of water and you can sort of be quite expressive with. Um, so things like this or like a sumi brush if you happen to have some calligraphy brushes lying around, they can also be really good for this. It just allows you to be really expressive and really free and very fun with the paint. Okay, now to add some string. <laughs> this might seem a little bit bizarre, but trust me, it creates some really cool and interesting effects. It actually sort of absorbs the paint towards it, so when it dries, we get these really interesting and unique patterns. I recommend playing around and seeing what techniques you prefer. So you can either soak the string in the palette, or you can actually sort of paint on the string, which is something that I've tended to prefer to do. I just feel like I've got more control over, over what's going to happen. Um, the other reason I do this is because if you put the finer string straight in the palette, sometimes it can get a bit tangled, whereas this I can keep it very fluid and very loose. I recommend experimenting with different types of string or thread. So this is some sewing thread that I found. I think it's cotton. So uh, let's see what happens. Top tip, always wash your brush between colors. It keeps everything much more vibrant. I recommend just having fun with the painting process. Don't think about it too much. Don't try and plan what's going to appear because you can't with this kind of process. You never know. And I think that's the, the really fun part of it. You sort of never know what's going to appear. So just enjoy the colours and enjoy the brush strokes and how you can change and manipulate the brush to make the paint move in different ways. Experiment with water. What happens? when we drop water in certain places, what does the paint do in response to water?
really enjoy these dots of ochre and ink spotted into the white paint. I love watching them expand and change as they sort of travel through the parts of water. It's quite an exciting moment to just sort of sit back and watch as you create this. dry overnight that way that the string can be like completely fully dry otherwise you can sometimes not get the full effect of the marks. This is definitely my favourite part of the process revealing the paper where we've had our string. I love seeing the marks and the patterns that the material has created. So our next step is to grab a pen or a fine liner, biro, whatever you happen to have lying around and get creative and get drawing. I quite often follow little edges of watercolour marks, whether it's an edge to a paper or two different colours as they meet. I find these edges really interesting and sort of minutely follow them. Sometimes you'll find they're kind of splayed out like little trees as well and they're quite fun to sort of sketch over. I allow the lines and the shapes to sort of form themselves. This reminded me of a tree, so I sort of hinted at a tree, but without actually drawing one. I've just taken ideas from the sort of splotches of paint as they've naturally occurred.
as you look, think about different ways you can use the pen, such as stitching. I really enjoy these marks where you can create such dense shadows from tiny dots. I find them very intricate and they work really well with the tiny string lines that we've created. Explore more ways that we can create these marks, such as using the side of the pen, what happens, what changes. For me, this one becomes much, much lighter and almost kind of a scruffy, edgy finish, which I really enjoyed working with. So after our fun and experimenting, this is what it looks like. I'm not sure if it's quite finished yet, but I'm really enjoying the process and how it's turning out. I think it's really interesting. It's got so many different marks and shadows. Although it doesn't particularly look like anything, it can be really fun just to play with marks and colour and explore different shapes and see what happens. This is the second piece I've been working on. I'm really enjoying the vibrancy of this. It's a palette I don't normally use, so I'm using this stand to kind of just push myself in out of my own comfort zone, but using really fun ways and methods of experimentation. I hope you have an awesome time creating your own work from this tutorial. Please share anything you do create because we would love to see it. Stay safe and stay creative.